Are you bored with your current scrapbooking projects? Do you want to try something different, play and explore some new supplies to get your creativity flowing? Hey crafty friends, this is Chelsea. Today's video, I want to play a little bit. So I have some new things, some old things, and I used to do a lot of mixed media and art journaling, and I've been feeling that want to get back to that kind of creating a little bit more than I have in the last few years. So today's project, I'm going to do a double page layout. I have these really cute photos of my daughter. I have a few more that I'm going to use as well. From this day, it was her first time playing in her brand new pool last year. It's such a happy memory. She had such a wonderful time and I definitely want to get these documented. So I'm going to be using some stencils. This is the Dream Maker stencil from Close to My Heart. These patterns all came together in a 12 by 12 and then I just cut them apart. I think I'm mostly going to want to use this circle one, but when stencils come in a big sheet like this, I like cutting them apart because I find them easier to use. And of course, the Dream Maker stamp set. So this is a special that started in May and it goes until the end of June, but you're probably going to see this stamp set circulate on my table and in my projects many times in the future because I just love this set great texture elements for your backgrounds, really pretty flowers that leave lots of options for coloring. So uh, there is a whole sheet of sentiments in here as well, but I just love this side and it's probably gonna stay out on my table for a while. And then of course I want to dig into my stash this year. I really wanna start using some of these mediums before they dry up. This is the Vicki Booten Iridescent Glaze. I did put a piece of press and seal in here and rehydrate it a little while ago. So hopefully this is still usable. Sadly, I bought this kind of just before I sort of stopped doing a lot of art journaling and mixed media. So I wanna get some use out of this. And then I've been going back into my uh, Magical Mica stash. These are from Lindy Stamp Gang. This is like their original packaging. So I grabbed a couple colors that I thought went really well with my photos and uh, I'm hoping to get some use out of these as well. They are a mica powder and you just hydrate them with water. You can paint with them, splatter with them. And I love that they are powder because they do not uh, go bad. They're just a dry powder and you just hydrate them or mix them with mediums as you want to. This is a new purchase for me. I got the Ganzai Tambi from Kiritaki, the uh, metallic watercolors. So these are beautiful shades of gold, champagne, silver. So I have, I ordered these from Amazon. I have yet to get them out and play with them. So I'm hoping to use them today and just kind of get a feel for how they work and how I like them. All right, so we also have on here the Dream Maker pattern paper. I love the artistic feel of this paper, right? You have kind of like the water color splashes and splatters and kind of like fading in and out. So I am going to use some of these colors. They're a bit more muted than the colors of my photos, but I think between this and the bright colors of these, I can kind of pull it all together and make it work. At least that is my hope. I also pulled in some Capri glitter paper because this really matches the blue in the pool and I love this color, it's absolutely gorgeous. I believe this color of glitter paper will be retiring, so if you're wanting to get your hands on it, now would be a good time to order it. And then this is new for me. I have been hearing really good things about the Vicki Booten mixed media paper. This is just white, really heavy stock 12 by 12 paper. So this is gonna be kind of its first test run for me. I wanna try it out using it as my backgrounds for today's pages. It's fairly expensive. You only get 12 sheets in a pad. And so I wanna see if it's worth it. I'm gonna throw some wet media at it, see how it curls, how it holds up. And it uh, says it's 140 pounds, so hopefully it should be really good. All right, let's jump in and start creating. Since I know I want to do some messy things, I'm just going to start out with one Versa mat with my 12 by 12 paper and then my all purpose mat on the left here so I can mix things on there. Here's my photos and I have a couple of scraps of this Dream Maker paper. You can see I actually die cut out of that yellow one, but it's all right. We're going to cover that up. Just wanted a little bit of the pattern paper to be coming out from behind my photos. Then I have this Paige Evans pool overlay 
and I love overlays. I just don't use them super often. So that was one of my goals for this layout was to use that cut. I did it on my Cricut. And I can't remember if it's one that I got for free from Paige or if it's uh, a purchased one, but I did also create the backing pieces for it. And I'm just ripping this piece here. I wanted to rough up that edge, give it a little bit of texture. The colors are looking really washed out on camera. They are a little bit more vibrant in person, uh, but the lights just kind of wash them out. I did cut out this word party with the Ottoman November font on my Cricut, and that's out of the Capri glitter paper with an offset of vellum. And uh, I was gonna do an offset in white, but it's just too much white going on. So I'm glad I went with the vellum. And then I decided my pictures need a little bit of a pop. I didn't want to matte them. So I thought I'll just take my archival ink and I'm just hitting the very edge. I don't wanna go too far into the photo, just really defining the edges so that they stand out a little bit. I did that with all my photos and then set them off to the side to dry. Now it's time to back this cut file and I did create these inside pieces. You can just hand cut these inside pieces if you want to, but I find it easier to do just in design space. I did a whole tutorial on how to do this in the Creative Design Team membership, but basically I just use the contour and the offset feature to make these the right size and kind of separate them out so I can cut them out of different papers. And it makes doing overlays like this super easy. I put the liquid glue on the back of my overlay and then just laid it on top of the pattern pieces of paper. And you wanna use really light applications of glue so you don't have anything oozing out. I could have made this really bright and busy by using more than one type of paper in each letter especially for this ball one. I could have cut it out of a whole bunch of different patterns, but I wanted to keep it a little bit on the simple side so it didn't get too crazy. And I really love how this turns out with the four different patterns behind there. Once I'm ready to attach this to the page, I do plan on using foam tape on the back side of that as well as on the back side of the word party. And I think that's gonna be a really cool feature on this page. Before I kind of bring in any wet media, I want to do a little bit of stamping. I got a little zealous here with stamping blocks. I thought I was gonna do a lot more stamping than I did, but I grabbed this text stamp. I love this one. It's perfect for making super detailed backgrounds. And in order to map out where this is gonna go, I'm just using a pencil and marking all four corners of my paper here so that I have a good idea of where my stamping needs to go so that it's actually showing. I'm gonna use Flamingo ink. It matches one of the pinks that is in the bottom part of the pool there, as well as the paper in the Dream Maker collection. There is some Flamingo in there. So I just wipe my finger along the edge to soften the edges. And then I'm gonna use second and third generation stamping. Basically, I keep stamping it until there's no more ink left on there. I don't know if you can really see the lighter versions, but in person you can definitely see all the subtleness of that text. And this is such a great way to fill in a background or frame something. Now I thought about doing some more stamping on here, kind of that watercolor wash stamp. I was thinking about adding that. And then I thought, you know what? I wanna use some wet media on here. So I grabbed that pot of magicals. This color is called Hydrangea Blue, and I'm just spritzing some water onto my mat and then mixing in the color. I wanted to add color kind of slowly because I thought maybe having more water down would be better and match some of the softer colors that are in that Dream Maker paper, but it turned out like a completely different color than what I was expecting. It was much kind of deeper and a different shade, not that kind of bright turquoisey blue. So I went and grabbed my Ocean Gloss Spray because I figured this was exactly the shade of the blue on the pool and it's super close. That was what I had in mind. So I was just gonna use that. And then I thought, you know what? I'll give it one more shot with this, with the Magicals and just see if I add a little bit more color. Maybe that's my problem. I went too slow and didn't add enough color or enough powder to get the shade that I wanted. 
And that definitely was the issue. Adding more color got me a much more vibrant color, but it still wasn't exactly the tone I was looking for, so I decided to use both. I figured that kind of slightly darker blue is also in the pool in a few areas, so I'm using both of those blues, and I am just grabbing a paintbrush, and I'm gonna go for it, just adding a big circle right here at the edge, and then I want to have it kind of just poking out the side there. I have plans for a big circle on the next page. So I'm using the other blue to make a smaller circle, letting them blend together while they're wet. And then, of course, throw in some splatter. I love adding splatter. And uh, why not? It goes really well. Now here, right there, I was kind of regretting my choices. So I hadn't planned to put a circle over here. I just kind of got carried away with the fun of making these like scribbly looking circles. <laughs> so uh, I do end up changing that later on because it just kind of drove me nuts. And once I added my title and it got super busy in that corner, I just wasn't happy with it. So now I am adding some strokes of color. I could have grabbed like a flat brush, which would have worked better for this application to give me a nice wash of color. But I didn't feel like standing up to go get a different size brush. So I'm just using this one round brush that I had and kind of painting in a base for my title. And I brought in my other piece of foundations paper. This is gonna be for the right page. And I have a circle that I cut on my Cricut at 10 and a half inches and just kind of eyeballed the center there. I knew if I tried to freehand a circle of this size, I would not be happy with my finished product. So I wanted to start out with just wants around the circle to give me that nice round shape, and then I can kind of messy it up from there. That was kind of my idea. So I wanted to have a really large circle on this page, and I'm just playing. I'm dipping into the color, kind of letting it fade off and be darker in some areas and lighter in other areas. And then I'm also going to grab some of the Magicals Blue, which is a little bit darker, it's get, getting thicker as some of that water evaporates, and just blend it in there and add a few rings of that as well. And the hard part with this is to know when to stop. Now, after I'd done this, I realized I forgot to stamp so I had to let this dry and then go back and add the same text stamping with that Flamingo ink. And it actually looks the same uh, because the watercolor is transparent and the sprays are transparent. It was, it was fine. You couldn't tell that I had forgotten the stamping. So I just made sure to let it completely dry and then added that stamping in. Now I had set these aside to completely air dry. I did not want to use a heat tool. And I have to say, I am so impressed with this paper. There is the slightest bit of a curve, but really not much at all. If I would have added this much water and medium to like a regular white sheet of cardstock, it would have been definitely bending way more than this. So I am super happy with how this turned out. Basically, my layouts are flat. They're going to go into page protectors really well. So I will be using that more often as my backgrounds for mixed media layouts. So you can see I mounted the two flowers from that Dream Maker stamp set onto blocks and I am just randomly coloring in some of this gold watercolor. This is number 903 from that set and it's a nice warm yellow gold. And basically I'm creating a background that I can stamp these flowers onto. So I want something very like random and artistic looking. I started to splatter and then realized that was a bad idea. <laughs> so grabbed that piece of printer paper to kind of shield the rest of my work from the splatter. And then I'm gonna dry this completely before stamping it. I am super happy with how beautiful these watercolors are. I didn't really play too much with the other colors. I did swatch them out a little bit, but they're so like high shine. I cannot wait to play more with these. So here you can see that I have stamped. I kind of picked the pieces that I liked and then stamped with my archival ink and then hand cut out all these flowers. Now I'm gonna start laying all my pieces out and adding some of the embellishments and just seeing if I'm happy with how everything is. You can see I still have those blue circles on the left-hand side there. 
I went ahead and mounted all my photos on some of the paper from the Dreammaker collection and there's not much of it showing but just enough to add little pops of color around the outside. You could always use cardstock if you don't want to use pattern paper for this. And then I'm just positioning my title and my flowers kind of figuring out where I want them to go. That little scrap of the yellow pattern paper on the right page with the zip strip of the little suns, I just wanted a little piece of that since I have a big piece along the top of my left hand page with the suns, I wanted to repeat that somewhere. So I thought I would throw this little scrap that I had left over onto my right hand page. So this is my general idea for my embellishments. I was going to see if I could hide some of the blue with those flowers, but I decided just to give up and I redid this side. I didn't get rid of the paper. I used the back side. So there's watercolor on the back side of that left hand page. And uh, I was amazed with how well that held up. It flattened right out again once it was completely dry. And I was much happier with the finished product. Honestly, now stepping back and looking at it, I think either one would have worked fine. I think I could have left those blue circles. It wouldn't have been a big deal, but at the time I just couldn't get past it. So you can see here, I have gone ahead and stuck everything down. Uh, I added a couple of florals on this left-hand page, kind of tucked under the paper. I am going around and adding some little blue stars that are die cut from Capri glitter paper. There's a range of different sizes. Some of them are outline, some of them are solid. And I used this star shaker window thin cut to get all this little confetti. So I cut out both of those to get the outlines and to get the solid pieces. I also used this sprigs and leaves die, this one in particular, and I cut them from vellum and added them to all my flower clusters. Now in case you're wondering what happened to the stencils and the glaze, I did pull them out and think about using them, but I just felt like it was busy enough and I didn't want to add any more to this layout. I grabbed my pink jelly roll pen here and I added journaling. So I drew lines with a pencil and my tea ruler and just filled in the whole story of this day. I'll give you a close up look here at all that texture. I added some stickers from the sticker sheet and I had sketched this out in my head and on paper of how I kind of wanted everything to go so that as I was creating the backgrounds, I knew where to add my stamping so that that's where the embellishment clusters would be going. And I highly recommend that so that uh, if you're creating a background from scratch that you kind of have an idea of where to start. I love how the magicals and the gloss spray really add to this water feeling of being in the pool. And this was such a fun layout. I had so much fun creating this. And I challenge you guys, if you're kind of bored with what you've been doing, switch it up, do something new, whether that's stamping, stitching, mixed media, adding some mist, whatever it is, I challenge you to try it out and just jumpstart your creativity. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Here is another video on the screen that I think you'll like and I will see you next time. Bye.